Hello again and welcome to New Mexico Military Institute for Bronco Baseball. Kelly McDonald joining the team here for game number four against the Western Texas College Westerners. I'm here with uh, Coach Lee Johnson. Coach, I'm glad to be here with you. Glad, to, glad you could make it, Kelly. We had a really good first game, the Broncos did. Yeah, I guess the Broncos uh, dropped two yesterday, and then they did manage to win game one of the doubleheader today. And uh, looking to earn the split here in game number four. And uh, we're just about ready for the first pitch. It looks like it's going to be. Okay. It's going to be Aiden Zacharias on the mound for the Broncos, and we will we will uh, go through lineups kind of as we go as we're ready to start, and it is going to be number two, sorry, number eight, Nathaniel Lopez to lead things off for the Westerners. Lopez, the second baseman, wears number eight. Good fastball by Zacharias to get ahead in the count. And here's a hard hit ball to the gap, actually a little bit short, and a great diving catch made in center field, and that is Junho Sun, or Sun, uh, yeah, Junho Sun making the play out there. Really nice job out there, as you see on your screen. I'm not used to having the. Uh, the live screen here, so that's a that's a luxury for me. Ball wasn't hit quite as hard as it looked. No, it looked like it got off the bat pretty, pretty well. So that's going to bring up Morrison, number 29. He is the first baseman, and it looks like he is going to look at a called strike. 1-0 pitch is going to be fouled out of play, and he's behind 0-2. He was 0 for 4 the first game, three strikeouts and a. Actually, 0 for 5. Three strikeouts, a ground out, and a pop up. Just missed out on the uh, dreaded uh, sombrero there. Here's a high ball, looks to be out of play and tailing foul, but over the fence. So that ball has hit a ton, but foul down the right field line. Alvarez, I don't know if he ever saw it till it was. Yeah, that was. Uh, <laughs> that ball was hit way up in the air. Wind is. Probably not helping the hitters today. Another towering shot out of play behind us. And trying to uh, trying to get the game changer going here, which would help me out, but uh, not working. O2, and we'll get another O2 as that one's fouled behind first base. And they need more baseballs, they get them. Morrison in the first game came up in the first two times up with the bases loaded both times, and they struck him out, which is good. He hit two home runs yesterday. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and this is up and out. It's going to be one and two now to Morrison. Now two and two is that one in a similar spot. It's Morrison, good discipline up there after being behind. Thank you, Mr. Gunn. Two two pitch way up and in. And he's worked himself to a full count here. He keeps working him in, so we'll see what he does on this three two. Zacharias from the windup. Back towards us. So a bunch of foul balls here as the wind really blowing in, I would say, kind of left to right and in. It was helping at the last ballpark I was in today, but hurting here. And that's a quality of bat there for Morrison as he draws the walk after being down 0-2. And the first base runner of the game for the Westerners. Sebastian Huerta, number 21. Hitting from the right side. And Morrison at first doesn't look like he would be a huge threat to steal. 
typically the first baseman or not. And that first pitch is up. Ball one. Westerners didn't hit, get too many hits last game, so uh, hopefully we can keep them at bay again. Call strike outside half. Well, if they continue to get good defense like they got from the center fielder already, that's always helpful to the pitchers. One on one out here. Huerta will get one foul out of play. It's gonna get over the second fence, looks like, out into the track. And the wind basically ruined them what would be a perfect day for baseball. It was perfect earlier today, 11 o'clock. It was, it was perfect. It was. All right, the one, two is away. That will even the count at two and two. So Western Texas yesterday, or today, only scored three runs compared. They scored a bunch yesterday, so. <laughs> Hit and run. But he will go back to first. 23 runs yesterday, I hear, and, and just three runs today. Of course, that's in two games yesterday, but much better. Pitching much better defensively for the Broncos today. And like you said, they hope to continue that here. Broncos had a great relief job uh, the first game, five innings of no runs allowed. Oh, got him looking there on the inside fastball. So that will be all for Huerta. And that will bring up the cleanup hitter, Helton. Harrison Helton. He's going to hit from the right side as well. Good fastball right down the middle. Zacharias has done a good job of getting ahead of the hitters here. He has. 0-1 pitch coming. Outside ball one. Morrison at first. With two gone here in the top of the first. Broncos looking to carry that momentum from game three. Now throw over just to keep Morrison honest, I think. he's As I said, he's not getting big leads. It doesn't appear to be a threat, big threat anyway, to steal a base. See if they hit, they hit and run the previous hitter. Maybe they're going to put something on. Foul back on top of the plate, strike two. So Zacharias coming in today, Kelly had a three and two record with an 11.74 ERA, which is up there. Yeah, that's a little up there. <clears throat> but he has looked good so far. There's a chopper they're gonna say is foul. Catcher went to get it, but manages to spoil that pitch. So we'll have a one two pitch once again. Broncos might need some more of that good bullpen help today, although Zacharias looks okay so far. And here's a shot to the gap in left center, and it held will be up. caught. The wind held it up just Again, enough. Yeah, that was another good play by the center fielder, Junho's son. And that will do it for what the Westerners in the top of the first. They get uh, no runs, no hits. No errors, one left on base. We'll take a quick break and be back for the bottom part of the first inning here from New Mexico Military Institute in just a moment. Thanks for tuning in to KSVPTV.com.
All right, welcome back to New Mexico Military Institute and Bronco Baseball. Lee Johnson, Kelly McDonald here with you as we head to the bottom of the first, and the Broncos are going to lead things off with a Bernie. I'm not sure how we're saying that. Sakaris. Sakaris, okay. Bernie Sakaris, he is the left fielder, and he's going to lead things off. Actually, in high school, he, he, he came from Hobbs. It was Bernie Sakaris Puig. You know what? I remember that. He is. Uh, I remember him playing for Hobbs. There. Right. And I remember that Sakaris Puig name. So, gotta gotta love the New Mexico kids on these teams. All right, big swing there at the second pitch. He's New Mexico via Cuba. <laughs> oh, is that right? Well, I, you know what, I think the, the major leaguers that have been Puig have been Cubans as well, right? if I recall. There's a ball away. Barube throws hard. He does. I haven't mentioned the pitcher's name yet, have I? Ethan Barube. Big kid. Out of the stretch. Got him. Oh, strike two. Sorry, two and two. Had the count wrong. Good curveball. <laughs> yeah, that one uh, froze him a bit, I think. So here's a 2 2. Now full count. So actually not giving away signals, but we can see what pitch is coming. <laughs> oh, well, so that just makes you look good, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think he's going to throw I just a miss here. I, huh? have, I yeah. haven't been watching that monitor. Yeah. So expect fastball here. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> fastball away, and he gets him with the swing and strikeout. So the chorus will go down, and it will be that center fielder with two great plays to start things off, Jun Ho Sun, and he will also – Hit from the left side, I believe. Yeah, you know, those secrets of the trade. You watch those guys on TV and those analysts, and they sound like they really know what's going on. They got a lot of help. If we had the K-Zone. Yeah, that right? would be nice. Yeah. Maybe we get Gene to work on that for us. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that's coming. I'm sure it's coming. Oh, good movement on that one. Here's a shot up the middle. Waits on it. And throw is in time. Well, that was a close play. That was close. <clears throat> Made by the center field. Uh, sorry, the shortstop Castillo over to Morrison. and Had to wait on it. Thought he might charge it just a little bit more. but Yeah, he made it closer by, by waiting on it. Yeah, he? that he had to. <clears throat> but gets the job done. And... Two outs qu kind of quickly here for the Broncos. We'll bring up Lizarraga. Daniel Lizarraga. He's the third baseman. Bats from the right side. And that one's in the dirt and outside. So 1 0. That curveball has lots of tilt to it, doesn't it? Yeah, he's got movement on, on uh, more than one pitch, actually that I've seen here in the early going. There's a fastball up for ball two. And like you said, he, he's got a little heat on it. 2-0 pitch. Outside. So I doubt we'll see a swing here, but you never know. Yeah, he's, uh, he's up with all of his fastballs just about. And he does have the green light and fouls it back. It's a 3-1 now. I'd like to see how hard he's throwing, but we can't. Anyway, the MPH monitor is uh, so down we, at the. Oh, where we can't see it. Yes. And there is a, another one fouled back to make it full count. It is, actually. Talk about him swinging 3-0. We had a kid at the, on the high school team I covered. Thought he had the green light and actually read the, had the wrong sign. Hit a home run, 3-0. <laughs> so he's got the green light from now yeah, on, yeah, right? Yeah, he does. Or he thinks he does. I'm anyway. sure he does. Oh, check swing foul. Yeah, the old 3-0 uh, home run. 
coach was getting ready to get mad at him and said, hey, that's, oh, yeah. Yeah. Can't get mad at that. So another payoff pitch here for Lizaraga. Another foul ball back, so staying alive up there. He's fouled off some good pitches. <clears throat> Payoff pitch number three. Oh, got him looking with the bender, and that will do it for the Broncos in the first. And it looks like they are going to get no runs, no hits, no errors. And we will take a break before we head to the second. Thanks for tuning in to Bronco Baseball. KSVPTV.com. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back to Roswell, New Mexico. New Mexico Military Institute taking on the Westerners from Western College. Western Texas College, I should say. And we're going to get another foul ball to start things off. Number 30 is uh, not Quentin Johnson. I'm not seeing it on my lineup here. I think it might be 20. 20 instead of 30, I don't know. Here it is. Quinn Johnson, okay. So Quinn Johnson at the plate to lead things off for the Westerners. He'll be followed by Biggs and Tate. 1-1 one, one pitch coming, and that's right through the five hole. It went well, through, two. It went through the wickets, didn't it? It did. There we go. Look at this. Jeff Gunn taking care of us here, partner. All right, a 2-1 pitch now to Johnson. A high 3-1. And the wind's died down a little bit now. It's died down a bunch, hasn't it, according to the flags. And here's a shot to left, and it will drop for a base hit in front of the right fielder. And that is, I'm not sure who that is. I'll have to look at this extensive roster here. We'll get that for you. So base hits start things off for the Westerners, and it will be Coleman Biggs, number six, the right fielder. Up high ball one. Biggs bats from the right side. And with nobody gone, looking to move that runner in a scoreless game. From the stretch, nice. Good. Nice curveball in there. That was a good curveball. Hopefully you can get somebody to roll over on one right <laughs> here and get a 
Yeah, that's what potential he's, double play. What he's looking for. One one pitch here. Up high. Ball two. So Aiden Zacharias. Pretty good to start things off. Had a scoreless first. Give up a walk and now giving up a hit. Throws over to first. Not in time. Zacharias from Volcano Vista, Albuquerque. 3 1 outside, 2. Oh, I guess it wasn't 3 1, was it? But it is now. He just needs to finish that fastball pitch where he can get it down a little bit. He hadn't thrown very many of those for strikes. No, he, as you mentioned earlier, he is missing those up. That one a little out, too, but just not getting all the way through on him. Here's the 3 1, and that is ball four. So two on now with nobody gone. So Zacharias in a little bit of an early jam here in inning number two. Going to bring up Dylan Tate. Next, late number three, Dylan Tate. Tate, the center fielder. The Westerners started off like this the first game. We, the Bronco pitchers were, well, he was wild, walking some people with no with no outs, and uh, that's not the recipe you want from your starting pitcher for a sure. Absolutely not. And, you know, it's great when your bullpen can get you out of those situations, but you don't want to have to rely on it too often. And it looks like the Western, the Westerners are looking to maybe play a little small ball here. It may, showed bunt last time, but then didn't show it there. And scoreboard says a one and one count. Cold strike there. Good curveball. Zacharias is looking for a ground ball. Yeah, double play would be. Excellent here. Ball outside. Two two count. Tate digs in. Looking at second now delivers. Curveball hit well into left. But he's under it, and they will not be able to tag on the fly out to left field by Tate. So that's just what the doctor ordered. I think as he threw the pitch, the wind picked up just a little bit to help hold that ball up for sure. Well, and, you know, it can affect the pitches too. You know, the, the wind, if it's strong enough, can affect the pitches and get a little more break on those breaking balls. And, that ball did seem to hold up. I thought it was hitting much better than that. He didn't, you know, first step was up. So so with one gone, that's going to bring up Ty Kloss, number five. Ty's the left fielder. And the first pitch is a ball. He had a play this kid hit and was playing left field and uh, – He made a valiant effort on a hard hit fly ball and hit the fence full speed. Oh, boy. Yeah. And uh, he, he's a tough kid. I would have been, if it had been me, <laughs> they'd have been <laughs> taking me to the hospital. Well, he's ahead here. Two balls and no strikes. <laughs> Fouled out of play. So two and one now. All right, runners at first and second. 
Two one count to Kloss. Another foul ball for strike two. Yeah, if Zacharias can keep the ball down, I think he's his pitches are good enough to get him out. He's just got to throw some bunch of strikes. Yeah, if he can settle in with that fastball, he can. I think he, I think you're right. I think he can be pretty effective here. So here's the two-two swung good on pitch. and missed for the strikeout and out number two. So a real chance to pitch himself out of a jam here. And it will be the nine-hole hitter, Caleb Castillo, the shortstop. That's a good fastball in. It tied him up for sure. Yeah, kept that one down enough anyway. So the runner's off to modest leads. Ball misses outside. A pitch, I should say, not a ball. It was a ball. One zero -oh pitch coming. Hit way up in the air. Popped up around third base, but it will be the shortstop making the play. And that will do it on the pop out. Good job by Zacharias getting out of that. Yeah, pitched himself out of a jam Absolutely. for sure. Absolutely. So we are going to take another quick break. Still no score here as we go to the bottom of the second inning. Uh, you guys have to get some food now. And uh, we're told we have to eat, so <laughs> we might take an extended break. Is that what you're saying? We'll be back before the next pitch, I promise, on KSVPTV.com. We are back, and there is the first pitch at the bottom of the second inning. It's going to be number 17, Shojun O. Oh? Sejun. Sejun, okay, Sejun O. Oh. He is the first baseman, and he is ahead in the count. Two balls and no strikes. Big lefty first baseman now 3-0. Ethan Barube's up with everything, up with his fastballs also. Ball four. It is ball four. All right, we're just waiting for the equipment to come off, and now a leadoff walk for the Broncos as they try to be first on the board here. Next up, number 20, Adonis Bernal. And that is going to bring up Adonis Bernal. He's number 20. He's the catcher. With the runner in front and nobody out. He's going to hit the ball into the gap in right center, and it's going to be played by the right fielder for out number one. 
that is Ovier. No, no, that's the other team. That is Biggs out there in the right. Doesn't seem like the ball's carrying. I mean, not at all. And, and the wind, you know, it, look, it looked to have died down to nearly nothing. Right. So here's Quan to the plate. He gets after the first pitch. He hits that high in the air to center. That's going back. It's going back. It's out of here. Two-run shot for Quan and a two-run lead for the Broncos. Boy, he hit, must have hit that, I'm guessing, 401. He crushed that, didn't he? <laughs> he as sure I said, did. as I as I said before, the ball wasn't carrying, but right. that one carried. That one absolutely carried and or, or fought against that wind. You know, that wind was pushing that ball kind of back and kind of to the right, but my goodness. He absolutely destroyed that ball. So Quan with the big two-run blast to get the Broncos on the board. And this will be He Run Han. Called strike. He's a DH today. Called strike. Good fastball on the outer third. And Uribe. Uh, Barube, I'm sorry. And oh. That one gets away from the catcher on the wild pitch. It's going to be one and two now to Han. I'm glad I'm not a catcher. <laughs> That caught some skin on that one. Yeah, that's those guys are uh, they are warriors to be sure. And oh, good eye on that one as it just misses two and two on one of several Korean players for the Broncos. One of seven. Seven. Got him. Called strike on the outer part of the plate. Han didn't think so. That was a good bit off the plate. Yeah, I, I didn't think so either. <laughs> but takes it like a man, walks back to the dugout. And now that's going to bring up number nine. And that's MJ Kim, second baseman. Ruby delivers outside, maybe down ball one. One oh pitch coming. Could be a curveball. <laughs> and there it is. I didn't look. I forgot Called. again. <laughs> Called strike on the curveball. <laughs> Man, I sound smart. Foul back for strike two. Yeah, we got a a great angle there from the center field camera. We're hoping to have some of that at the high school level, the center field angle. Uh, that is a good next shot. Year. Yeah, that, that really is. And that curveball stays up. So we can't see the miles per hour on the pitch on the scoreboard, but. Jeff Gunn told us he had been throwing as hard as 87, which for a game four starter, I think that's pretty good. I mean, that's decent velocity. Oh, absolutely. And and what got me too is there's a, you know, the the other the non fastball type pitches, all the way down to 55. So I mean that makes it really tough on a hitter. Right. You know when you get that much of a discrepancy in the speed of those pitches. Another attempt at the curveball is up. So we're going to have full count now. Yeah, I am loving this center field angle. We had an overheated phone, so it screwed up our Wi-Fi. And that is going to be ball four. So second walk of the inning for Baruby. So that's going to bring up the nine-hole hitter. And it's going to be the right fielder, Alvarez. Ovier Alvarez. 
He was game one starting pitcher. Oh, is that right? So that's uh, actually I don't know how if that's very common at the junior college level for pitchers to also play in the field. Right. First pitch is outside for ball one. Evidently, he's a he's a good hitter also. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, you, know. you do have that one player in the bigs <laughs> pitching and playing in the field. So. And double play chance here, and they don't need a double play because there's two outs, and it will be the fielder's choice put out to end the inning, but the Broncos get on the board with two runs via the home run by Quan. They lead two to nothing as we head to the third. Thanks for tuning in to Bronco Baseball on KSVPTV.com. All right, welcome back. We are on the campus of New Mexico Military Institute, and the Broncos have a 2-0 lead over the Westerners from Western Texas College. And the Westerners have Lopez to the plate. That is the leadoff hitter, Nathaniel Lopez, second baseman. And he's ahead. 2-0. Second time through the order, maybe Zacharias can keep the leadoff hitter off the. Don't want to give up another walk. Yeah, they've had the leadoff man aboard both innings, but he's down 3-0 here, so he's in real danger doing it again. Three zero, taken all the way, strike right down the middle. Now he'll be looking for something he can turn on, barrel up. And this is hit to the shortstop, the backhand, the one hopper is good enough for out number one. As Quan to O. But natural, that artificial turf, I mean, makes a great one hop. That, that's a that's a really good play. I mean, yeah. and it's an easy pickup for the first baseman. <clears throat> yeah, it's uh, it's something that a good a good infielder will use to his advantage. And of course, this field is grass in the outfield, but it is the turf infield. Use that hop if you can. So here's Morrison's second time through, and he rips one to first, and that will be the unassisted put out for O. Morrison's still hitless, hitless on the day, which is good. Well, yeah, I mean, anytime you get a guy that's that's hitting second in the batting order, keep him off the base pass for two straight games, that's a good thing. Now the three-hole hitter is Huerta. Sebastian. The catcher. Fastball stays up, as many of them have today. Zacharias got a decent rhythm going. Yeah, yeah you kind of get the sense he's settling in a little bit at this point. Coach Cook certainly hopes so, but there's two fastballs up and behind in the count, 2-0. and oh. But he's got two outs here. He's in, in good shape if he can get... Worth the 
But now 3-0. Maybe he likes working from behind. I don't. <laughs> Seems like he's been behind almost every hitter. <laughs> right. But he's been effective. Oh, he got, gave him the corner there. Three one pitch offers at this one, and that's going to be fouled out of play. So now full count. So he's back even in the count. <laughs> yeah. Trying to come all the way back to get him here. Payoff. And down stairs, ball four. Second walk. Second walk of the inning, yes? Yes. Yes. So two gone, one aboard. And that will bring Helton to the plate. Helton, the third baseman. Fastball up. Maybe in, two. Yeah, I'd be curious to see what the velocity on uh, on Zacharias's fastball is. I would guess around 80. Somewhere in there, probably, huh? Yeah, it seems like uh, Barube's throwing a little harder with his. 1-1 one, one count to the third baseman. Runner on first, being held on. And sends that one over towards his base coach. Wisely does not try to play it. And strike two. One, two count. Got him on the outside corner. I didn't think so, but I'm not the umpire. And that will do it for the Westerners. That was a really good curveball. It was. to say. It was. <laughs> a lot of movement on it. And uh, so that will do it for the Westerners top of the third. And we'll have the Broncos up. Try to add to that 2-0 lead when we come back. KSVPTV.com. All right, welcome back as we head to the bottom of the third inning. And it will be the top of the order, the Hobbs native via Cuba, as you said, Bernie Sakarias Puig. I don't know if he's still using the Puig. Used to in Hobbs. Looks like he, yeah, I see it on the, on the roster here too, so. <laughs> from Cienfuegos, Cuba, via Hobbs High School. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, he was a player. He did lots of damage to my team over the years there. So good to see him on a team to root for now. He takes a pitch up high for a ball. Zacatas with the good eye. Ball two. 
So I went through I went through the Broncos roster and wrote down all their how many international players and how much of it, how many of each they had. I'll just kind of read them out. Um, one one from Canada, one from Cuba, two from Mexico, seven from Korea, one from Panama, one from Japan, two from the Dominican Republic, and then the rest of them American. Uh, kids you know and that's that's how this school recruits you know they definitely recruit internationally for all sports and you know we've uh, when we've done the broadcast for volleyball and uh, and basketball we've had sometimes viewers from 12 different countries right you know, it's uh as Puig is gonna dig for two here and there would have been a play at the second base but kind of mishandled out there in right center so a leadoff double for Sakaris Puig, and that will bring Junho's son. As soon as he saw, he saw the outfielders. They weren't really going hard to the ball, they and weren't. he he was thinking too before he got to first base. Right, he was made up his mind he was going to go, which is outstanding base running. Absolutely, and you know I'm sure the first base coach over there is aware of that and is helping him out as much as he can. He sees them kind of. Kind of being a little lazy to the ball, as you said. You know, he's not going to pass up the opportunity, and he has got speed. I promise you that. He, he does, even without that bobble. I, I think he, I think he's got to. But yeah, I think he'll probably have a close play at right, second. But right. with the bobble, it was just no chance. He probably could have stood up. But all right, so we have a mound visit here, as they want to talk to Baruby. And I think I'm saying that right, because I think I could hear his teammates saying it like that, Baruby on the uh, field mic. They're discussing it here. Looks like they're going to leave him in. Just yeah. maybe having a conversation. Uh, got a got a righty warming up in the bullpen, so he's probably giving him some time to get loose down there also. Yeah, only at 41 pitches. So... They will leave him there, and he will face the two-hole hitter, the center fielder, Son, one of that Korean contingency. So runner with speed at second base, shows bunt, and leaves it down for ball one. Getting the signal from Coach Cook. If he can get the infielders moving around a little bit, maybe he can find a hole. Um, they think he's still sacrificing. Great bunt. Base hit. Bunts his way on for a single, and that's, that is the best possible result on a sacrifice bunt. Just trying to move that runner, but. Got himself a hit out of it. I think it's a, I, the pitcher act like he was surprised hey, by his six. speed. He, I don't know. On that, you've got to get to the ball and get get rid of it. If you are the pitcher or the catcher, take charge and go get it. But You know, and like you said, it was an excellent bunt. I mean, right between, you know, I kind of thought the catcher might go after it a little more aggressively than he did. Right. So here's Lizarraga. He shows bunt. So Coach Cook playing a little small ball here. <laughs> really working hard here to hopefully extend this lead. Swinging this time, and runner goes, and they'll let him go. No throw to third or second. And help me out here, Coach. Is that indifference? Is that a stolen base? What is that? Technically, I, I wouldn't call it indifference. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. Actually, and, and, and put that as a stolen base in the stats for the NJCAA since I do them. Probably yes. Technically, it is a difference if they do not try and make them. Yeah, I mean that first and third situation. I always wonder about that. Uh, and again, I do some scorekeeping, so it's. And I'll tell you what, scorekeeping for baseball is not an easy job. Right. But in any case, he's on second base, and they did not throw there. 
So two and one. Account to Lizaraga. And now three and one. Yes. Yeah. So a, a base available for David if he can he decides not to take a cut here. Yeah, I'm not sure if this guy might be his last hitter if he walks him. Well, since the guy that's coming up hit a home run his last time up, um, I would sure consider it. And it is a walk yep. for Liz Raga. And that will bring Seo Jun Oh will be back up. Oh, this it was Quan that hit the home run, not Oh. So... This is the first baseman, O. But we will get our second visit to the mound, and I believe that requires a pitching change, but I'm not sure. Yeah, he, he made the he, – he gave the right arm to the bullpen, so. So we will have a pitching change, and while he warms up, we'll take a little break. I think we deserve one. So we'll be right back in just a minute or two. KSVPTV.com with the Broncos leading 2-0. All right, welcome back. New pitcher is number 23, Daniel Collins, the right-hander out of the pen for the Westerners as the bases are loaded with nobody gone here in the bottom of the third. And the dangerous cleanup hitter, Shojun Oh, at the plate. And lefty Oh says, yeah, that was a strike on the outside half. He agrees. Good opportunity for the Broncos to put up a, a big number. If, uh, well, lots of ways to get that guy on third across with no outs, but they, they want a big inning here. You're right. That one's outside ball one. So the first baseman, O. Oh. They list at 5'9 and 192. He's put together pretty well. Yeah. So I was thinking he takes a big cut there at a ball out of the zone, though. All right. Here we go. And 
and that's outside <coughs> for ball two. Looked like that might have been a slider. Well, good play discipline from O for sure. He was okay with the pitch he took to start off the at bat. Two two is shanked down in the left into the cages over there. So some teams have on the on the have the communication devices coming from the dugout to the catcher, the catcher to the pitcher. All the institute players have that. They they know what the pitch is. All the players in the field. That's what I was told. Is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, Another foul ball there for, for another strike two. In high school, they only allow uh, the dugout and the catcher to Correct. have it. Correct, right. Uh, but that that's interesting. That's that's quite an advantage. I think so, just positioning-wise. Sure. And if you need to play, you know, one step over the one way or the other. But, you know, the, the hitters could could pick up on that as well. You know, if they see sure. the, see somebody moving, they think, well, that's that, that means this pitch is coming, so. Interesting. And a lot of teams, I hadn't seen uh, the Broncos do it, but they have each hitter, they have a little scout card that they keep in their cap or in their back pocket or whatever. Here's a chopper to second base, probably only first base, and a yeah. nice play. That was a good play. To get him out at first, but it is going to be an RBI for O as he can't beat out the throw in a slick play by Lopez at second base. Lopez made a phenomenal catch on a pop fly in the first game. So Ab absolutely a great play. So he makes uh, he makes it look easy. Yes. Is what you're saying. Very good. Very good infielder. So that is going to bring up the five-hole hitter, and that is Adonis Bernal, the catcher. And he's got plenty of power to do some damage here, and that is a good pitch, but I think he called it – he did call it a strike. All yeah. right. His his strike signal, he's right, and it's it's not it's outside tight. of him. Yeah. It's real tight, yeah. Well, at least he's got the mechanics. We played a game where the he has the ball lifted into right. Should be a routine play. We'll see. And they're going to send him. Has a quick release. Play at the plate. Good play. Is, and the, show, the throw is up the line and a little late probably as well. So another RBI on an out. So Broncos get two. RBIs on two outs, but they'll take them, and they extend the lead to four, and that will bring up Jun Hok Kwan, who hit an absolute missile out into center field for a home run earlier in the game. Not sure I'd get him, give him much to pitch. Good pitch there, though. That would have been one to take a cut at. Going to take a two-out hit to get the another run in. And I don't think they're going to get it as it's popped up to short. Routine and out number three, but the damage done. Two runs across for the Broncos. They lead it 4-0 as we head to the top of the fourth inning. Here on KSVPTV.com, Kelly McDonald here with Lee Johnson, and we'll be back right after this.
All right, we are back, and it will be Johnson, Biggs, and Tate up for Western Texas to start inning number four. And they trail 4-0 to the Broncos. They're looking to get a four-game split out of this trip. Trip for the Westerners. And Whoops. speaking of trip. <laughs> I think he hung a cleat. Yeah. Just didn't go all the way down, but he he did stumble there. Ball one and now ball two. He likes to work two and oh. <laughs> or or three and <laughs> he ain't afraid to, that's for sure. He he's been pretty good. Sixty three pitches, no runs. He has. Pitched out of a jam there or two. You go. That there, you called it. Yeah, I mean he's not afraid. You know, uh you know, sometimes you get hitters who aren't afraid to go down 0-2. But I have rarely seen a pitcher who didn't mind an 0-3 situation, and there is another walk. So just going to look here, and that is walk number three for Zacharias. Only given up one hit, four walks and three strikeouts over three. He's for, I mean, he's fortunate not to have given up any runs. But yeah. they, the, um, going into today as a team, Western Texas was hitting, what would we say, Jeff? 261. 261, so oh. not very good averages. Yeah, right, not, not, a, not a strong hitting team. They had a banner day as a team yesterday, <laughs> though. I mean. Well, they must have. They put up runs all over the place. They, they hit seven home runs. Oh, my. Yeah. So, to the credit to the Broncos pitching, they've they've silenced that part of it. And if, so far, uh, I'll probably put a jinx on them right now with that deal. But Well, as you said, a good, a good outing for Zakaria so far. But he has lived dangerously somewhat, had a leadoff. Runner in every inning. This is Biggs at the plate. Biggs with a walk in the game. 0 for 0. A little high. Ball two. You hope that being it, being behind in the count is not going to catch up with with him. Yeah, kind of what I meant by, by living dangerously because right. you can only allow so many base runners yeah. and, and count on your defense and yourself to pitch yourself out of those jams. Nice little action on that pitch there for strike one. So a 2-1 count to Biggs. I do see some movement down in the Bronco bullpen. Just in case. Well, and probably more than just in case. He is up to 69 pitches. Right. I mean, they're not. Well, we're in the fourth. You never know. You get some quicker innings, and you might be able to go deep. Double playground ball would alleviate a lot of that. Yes. <clears throat> and hit in the air deep to center, but not deep enough. Oh, boy, that wind is still doing stuff up there. And nicely done by Sohn in center field. Gets the ball back. Runner cannot go. So it will be one gone, one on for Zacharias. And that will bring Tate to the plate. Oh for 1 in the game. His second time through. And what do you know? First pitch is a ball. <laughs> Shocking. Right Actually, now. it looked pretty good to me, but I guess <laughs> it, I don't know where it was. Oh, here's the bullpen shot. Oh, I wonder okay. what that was. There we go. Okay. Didn't see a number there. But. I thought they were just showing the guy sitting on the fence, but there was a pitcher in the bullpen behind him. <clears throat> yeah, you said that. The low batting average as a team for the Westerners. Broncos hitting 336 on the season. Right. So that's a that's a big discrepancy. 
and then you get beat badly in two games, you know, by that team that you're – Right. You know, that's baseball, though. All right, the 2-0 and oh to Tate. Three and zero now. Is that one's outside? I'm thinking he may be getting a little tired. Um, Seventy-three pitches. Call strike inside half. Have to be taken all the way there. I think, as you should be. Three and zero. Oh. Down four runs, no outs. Oh, one out, sorry. Had the play in center. 3 1 pitch now. Swung on and missed for strike two. Nice pitch. It was. That ball may have looked like it was going to be in the zone, but tailed. So full count now to Tate. Let's see what the runner does. Up the middle, double play ball. Perfect double play ball. And made it look pretty routine there. Six, uh, four, six, three. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> all that matters is that zero on the scoreboard, right? That's it. All right, so the Broncos, after three and a half, they're coming up to hit here in the fourth. Still lead 4-0. We're going to take a break. KSVPTV.com and Bronco Baseball. Bottom of the fourth inning, and New Mexico military will have Helton to the plate, third baseman. And he's going after the first pitch, and it gets through. Seemingly a wizard at second base. I think that's going to be an unusual error for that kid right there. But it will be. I mean, I would call that an error. It is an error. Yeah, yeah. At this level. You know, in high school, I might say that's hit sharply and Maybe that's a hit, but uh, that's that's an error at this level for sure. Honestly, I thought he should have just squared the baseball up. And, I mean, I yep. think he could have. I, I don't know why he wanted to backhand it. Yeah, it didn't look like he needed to. Uh, and we were talking about all the good plays he's made. Oh, called strike outside half. That looked outside. And this is... New, new hitter for the Broncos. No, uh, number nine, I think. Yeah. Oh, M MJ yeah. Kim. I'm looking at yeah. the wrong team. MJ Kim to the plate. And a walk his first time up. And 
He's behind 0-2 here after the called strike and the foul ball. And there's a ball. So one two pitch coming from Collins. That one's outside. Good job by the catcher to keep that in front of him. See if Coach Cook might put something on here. He likes to hit and run every once in a while. Well, a two two count. And that is foul ball. Just left of the bag at third. So we'll do 2 2 over again. All right, so here's Kim way outside. So he's worked his way all the way back here. Good at bat. Kim hitting 290 coming into the game. Draws the walk here. So second walk of the game for MJ Kim. And the runner was on the move, but Broncos got something brewing again. Yes, they do. There's nobody gone. So Alvidrez to the plate, the right fielder. And he is 0 for 1 in the game. As our game changers a little behind, but they're trying to catch it up. He's looking to bunt, lays down a good one. And no one to throw to. Nice so. hit. Another great bunt. Yeah, I'm not sure what the first baseman is doing there, but yeah. um, he got way too far away from the bag and stayed there. So Yeah, the right side of the infield just in the last two plays. <laughs> They've cost them. Yes, yeah, cost absolutely. Them, cost them two outs there, yeah. which could cost them potentially runs here as we're going to have top of the order. Dangerous hitter with a lot of speed, and that is Bernie Sakaris. Three seventy-seven on the season. Goes after the first one, fouls it back. Yeah, so the first baseman, as soon as he saw the ball bunted to the third base side, should have been, I mean, sh like, should have been sprinting back to the bag. Yeah, you're, it was just being lazy. I don't, I'm just going to call it lazy. Yeah, I mean, or just uh, a pretty bad mental error. Right. One of the two. Oh, one is outside, and Sakaris thought that was a little close, but a good eye. It sure put their pitcher in a bind. It absolutely does. Yeah. So let's see what Bernie can do here. Nobody gone. Base is loaded, and that's going to. Well, that one slipped. And the ball gets away, and they're going to try to get two out of it, and they will. Oh, no. They could get three. Boy, he no. was thinking about it. Yeah. I'll tell you what. He. So two runs come across on the wild pitch and the throwing error. I'm going to say two wheels have fallen off <laughs> in this inning. Yeah. yeah, and that's, uh, well, it's way worse than one, actually. Um, but, yeah, two more across. And that means it's 6-0. Nobody gone. Runner at third. And that's pitcher's worst nightmare right there. And Zakaris hits one a mile in the air to left field. And can't tag. Too shallow, so that will be out number one. And Jun Ho Song. Center fielder will come up. He's one for two. And an RBI chance here for him. 
for the lefty, really just hit the ball to the right side. And so we have an update on the run rule. I might be getting ahead of ourselves, but 10 runs after five, eight runs after seven. Okay. Because this is a scheduled for nine. Correct. correct? Okay. Yep. So ball one to Sohn. And this is hit well into right field. Will it be deep enough? Right fielder coming. He's, He's going to throw. The relay is there, and the tag is made. Great relay for out number three. And they cannot get the last run across, but they do add to their lead. And the Broncos now lead 6-0 after four innings of play. We're going to be right back on KSVPTV.com right after this. We are back and we are ready for inning number five. New pitcher for the Broncos, and it will be number four, Jason Maldonado. So we can uh, close the book on Aiden Zacharias. He did a good job, didn't give up a single run, although quite a few, quite a few hitters got on base one way or the other. None of them don't even remember one getting a third, but I could be wrong about that. I don't think they did. And and to his credit, he did get one double play ball in that last inning, which was big. Yeah, and he had uh, at least the one somewhat spectacular play in center to help him out early. But other than that, right. he, he just basically pitched himself out of it. I mean, that, good job. Good quality start from uh, Zacharias. So we'll see what Maldonado can do. Let's see. Might have some pitching stats on Maldonado yeah. here. Ball. Looks like he's got a no wins, no losses, 697 ERA, and coming in to right now he's pitched 10, 10 and a third innings. Okay. All right, so just missing there. One and one to the hitter. Let's see, it's Klaus, Ty Klaus. And he fouls one off for strike two. I'm trying to get to my pitching stats on my technology here. So we can tell you about the new pitcher, Maldonado. Looks like he has a 6.1 ERA. It's my screen is jumping around funny here. Here's a shot to the shortstop. And collecting himself and making the throw is Quan, and nicely done. 6-3 put out for out number one. 
He made that look easy. That, that was a harder play than on the run. Yeah, harder. Harder than he made it look. That's for dang sure. So, so Castillo will come to the plate. And looks like they call that one a ball. Maldonado, 10 innings of work, 10 and a third for today. Another foul ball, or not another, a foul ball for strike one. <laughs> Giving up 15 hits, 11 runs, eight of them earned. Three walks to go with seven strikeouts. ERA, sorry. That was the wrong thing I was looking at is an ERA of 6.97, so just under 7. All right. The whip is good, though, 1.74. Up high, ball three, so 3-1 three, count now. He's throwing fairly hard. Yeah, pretty decent velocity there. Doesn't look like a real big kid. And down, and he's going to continue the tradition of getting the leadoff guy on. <laughs> Why not? For the Broncos here. <laughs> Just once, I'd like to see him get the leadoff guy. They list Maldonado at 5'10 and 190, so. Not real big, but uh, good velocity. It's going to bring Lopez to the plate. Leadoff man who had the error in the last inning that caused runs. Good fastball. And Jason Maldonado is out of El Paso, Texas. All right. East Lake High School, is that what that says? I've not heard of that e high school. I haven't either. There, there's a lot of high schools. And there's a lot of high schools yeah. in El Paso. <laughs> I remember when there was about eight. And right. Now they're. It's probably 28. A one catches the corner, so two. He's trying to throw hard because he gave a uh <laughs> on the pitch. <laughs> Wants to let everyone know that. Uh, now watch him, he's off speed if he does the same thing. That's outside ball one. Not a bad spot for an 0-2 pitch. Runner with a modest lead. And that'll go foul. Just hook that foul. And when picking back up, still blowing kind of in, kind of left to right. But even when we set it died down, those balls hit way up in the air. Those catchers are, I mean, those fielders are running circles out there trying to get under it. Right. Um, you really don't want to have two guys on with this next guy up because even though he is over <laughs> for the day, he's, he's, he's got the power to make it a close game. Oh, and now we're at full count. Yes. Yeah. Maldonado, we're in the danger of losing. Bernal here after, uh, sorry, Lopez after getting ahead 0-2. Oh, Up high. And now two on for the dangerous hitter Morrison, the big lefty first baseman. And the wind would affect him less if he hits it down the power alleys or his power part of the field. Still could hold it up some, but not as much as it would the left. Pitches him away for ball one. Big kid, isn't he? He's a big kid. Good looking kid. Looks just like a first baseman. And this is near the same place for ball two. 
Well, and you say you don't want to put two guys on for this guy. You sure don't want to put three guys on for the number three hole hitter. Right. Yeah, that that's uh, – Got to go after this guy and now 3-0. That's, that's what he's trying to – not trying to do, but – well, you know, he does have one out, so, you know, maybe throw a curve, hope hope he can't get around on it, and hope you don't hang it. Now they're going to try to get him at second. It's a good play by the shortstop <laughs> yeah. on the catch. Yep, Quan showing his athleticism as the pickoff attempt nearly went out in the center. They've almost got the major league shift on. Well, they're going to get in the strike on the inside pitch there. Yeah, shortstop playing almost directly behind second base. That's as far as you're allowed to play, correct, in junior college? I'll have to ask. No, in Mr. college you can play. Anywhere? Yes. Okay. Yep. So he does walk Morrison. Yeah, he's – got some high stress stuff coming up so yeah you do have the one out so with one in your pocket you always have a chance of getting out out of it unscathed but you got to have a ground ball up the middle you got to have a pop up you got to have a strikeout lots of ways for western to get on the board here and it will be up to the three hole hitter and that is huerta Big catcher. Outside ball one. And no room for him on the base pass. Can I have to give him something to swing at, I think. And that ball's up, so yeah. Uh, that pressure on the pitcher goes up exponentially with each ball, and it's Cook coming out, Cook's coming out. So he wants to have a word, and this is not the pitching coach, so this is. Uh, he's walking with a purpose, so. We'll see. It will just be the battery out there with him. I don't see anybody in the bullpen, but that doesn't mean that they hadn't been throwing. Um. Yeah, and it's not a prerequisite. I mean, you can bring somebody in without them throwing ahead of time. It not, doesn't happen much. but All right. You know, just those, those golden words of encouragement from Coach Cook. I'm betting if Huerta sees a fastball, he's going to come out of his shoes. You think so? 3-0. Yeah. Oh, or, or is it 2-0? It's 2-0. It's oh, okay. And then I 100% no. <laughs> agree with you. <laughs> I would be if I was a hitter, but we'll see. And there it is. Sharply hit to the gap. Yeah, it's going to score gonna, at least two. Yes, maybe three. Just now hitting look, the wall. Look at this big guy run. <laughs> hey, look at that. Yeah. Going to go for three. Throw is past the third baseman. Good job by the pitcher backing up. Yeah, but that is going to be a triple. For Huerta and a bases clearing triple cuts the lead in half. It's six to three now. And we'll see what they do with Maldonado. Probably gonna let him pitch pitch through it. Yeah. At least one more hitter. Yeah, Although just, it's the cleanup hitter Hilton, Hilt, you know, it's it's nothing easy. He just gave the Westerners some new life Absolutely. With, with that triple. They were handing us notes on run rolls. I don't think we have to worry about that for the time being. Offers at the first one and fouls it to the screen. I'm still impressed by Evan Morrison running the bases, the big first base. He was moving. He was moving. He was not slow. <laughs> and we'll see Morrison. Number 29. My roster is not in numerical order, so it's a it's a pain here. Oh yeah. I was gonna see what they listed him as. 6'3 and 210. So for a guy 6'3, 210, that he's moving pretty good there. He's from Alberta, Canada. Oh, a Canadian. One-two count on the called strike there. 
Much needed. Love to get somebody at the plate here. I'm sorry, Medicine Hat, Alberta, Canada. Medicine Hat. Actually heard of it. 2-2 <laughs> two -two now to Helton. I don't. Well, and they get the strikeout. Two down. Sorry, I was distracted. Yeah, me too. That's all right. That's okay. If they're going to strike him out, we can be distracted for there a moment. Go. So that crucial second out in the books. Well, they need to get. The, they need to keep this run on third from scoring for sure. They really do. Uh -oh. Chance here, a high chopper, and who will it be? It'll be Quan. And they're going to get him at first base. What a play by Jun Yuk Quan. And he is a very slick with that glove. So the Westerners get three runs, cut the lead in half. So we're headed to the bottom of the fifth inning. But the Broncos still ahead 6 3, KSVPTV.com. All right, we are back here in New Mexico Military Institute. The Western Texas College Westerners come back, put three across in the top of the fifth, and now it's up to the Broncos to try to extend that lead back out. They still lead by three, six to three. And they will, oh boy, lead things off with, let's see, that is three-hole hitter, right? Liz, Liz Raga, is that who? Is up. At Daniel Lizarraga. Okay. That is. That curveball slipped again. <laughs> again. <clears throat> well, you hope so because it's going right at his head. 1 0 pitch, swung on foul. Play made in the dugout. Evens the count at 1 and 1. All right, one one pitch coming. Catcher sets up outside. That's hit to center and Son with another nice play out there. A ball tailed right to him. Worked out. Oh, that's not. I'm, I got the wrong dang team. Dylan Tate. Dylan Tate with the nice play in center field. He hit that ball really hard. He did, but just too close to the outfielder. Now number 17 coming to the plate, and that is Shojun O. Oh. And first pitch is a ball. One 
throw pitch coming. It's going to be hit to the second baseman, and he makes the play. He played it real routine. I mean, he does that. <laughs> Sometimes to his detriment, I think. You know, he either look great, making actually, it look that, smooth. Actually, that last hop was a. It kind of came up, and it he did just, come up on him. Yep. But it will be the four-three put out for out number one. <coughs> As O makes his way back to the dugout. Just a ho hum, another, another <laughs> play. All right, so the catcher Adonis Bernal will be to the plate, leading the team in. A lot of hitting categories. Called strike there. Get over to my offensive stats here. Nice to have it in front of me. Come on. Curveball away. All right. So that will even the count to Bernal. Bernal hitting. 383 this year with 44 RBI. And this has hit a ton to right field. He's going to have trouble with that if it's, it's fair. Gone. It's gone. If it stays fair, it doesn't. And it wasn't gone anyway, but uh, that was hit hard. But just out into the visitor's bullpen. Again, these balls are coming off the bat, and I'm thinking they're way deeper than they are, except for the one that went out, and I, I, and I thought that one was going to get caught. Right. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, it's fooled us a few times. One-two pitch coming. Got him as the catcher catches the foul tip, and that'll do it for the Broncos in the fifth. So we're still six to three as we head to the top of the seventh. Is that right? No. As we head to the top of the sixth. Six. All right. Thanks for tuning in to Bronco Baseball, KSVPTV.com. We'll be right back. All right, we're back for top of the sixth inning as the Westerners look to cut in this lead once again. Hard hit ball to right field. Looks to be playable and a nice job out well, there he, in right. By he did a good job staying with it, didn't he? He sure did. Yeah. Making a catch on the run. Had to go down for it, not to the ground, but kind of had to reach down for it. Because that ball slicing away from him off that right-hander's bat for yeah, sure. Absolutely. So that's... That's a nice job by Alvidrez. And that will bring Dylan Tate to the plate. And Tate 
in the game, 0 for 2, and he's hit a chopper in front oh, of the bag. Be a tough play. Catcher. Nice play. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. What a wonderful play. My goodness, Bernal. We need to have the replay to see that well, again, man. We're going to, I yeah. believe. I saw a replay earlier. Maybe we will if our producer is on the ball there. Here it is. And I'll tell you what, he got out of the box, he got to that ball, and threw a perfect strike over to O. And what a play. Zero wasted motion. Yeah. Bernal just. Boy, if, you're a, if you love baseball, you love to see plays like that. Really appreciate it. There's a called strike to the hitter, Tate. Oh, no. Where's the 3 0 count? <laughs> you're, you're telling me we got a strike on the first pitch? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that. The hitter is Klaus. Sorry, Tate was the previous hitter. I was one behind. 1-1 one, one count to him. And now 2-1. <laughs> so good defense here by the Broncos to start off this half of the inning. And now a 3-1 count. See if Maldonado can stay in this at bat. Here's a shot between short and third. Nice bit of hitting there by Klaus. He'll be over there at first. So it wasn't the leadoff man, though. That's the first inning, and the leadoff man wasn't on base. So one gone, one out. Castillo to the plate. Is there one or two? Oh, we do have two gone, don't we? We have two gone. Which is even better. Yeah, because I, uh, yeah. I missed that one. That, forgot about that first one. There's a swinging strike, which Good we fast. haven't seen a ton of swinging strikes. Good today. fastball. Peter is Castillo. 0 for 1 in the game. Has drawn a walk. Hits this one to the shortstop. That's usually not a good idea. And on the run. Oh, nice play. Quan, and he's past third base by the time that ball gets to the first baseman. Got to love him playing with confidence. And that is a slick play from Quan. So the Broncos allow no runs in the top of the six. So they'll be up in the bottom here to try to add to a 6-3 lead when we come back on KSVPTV.com. All right, we are back for more Bronco baseball here from the field on campus of New Mexico Military Mexico Institute. And Quan already has a two-run home run in the game. Up to bat here. We'll see what they have for him. Going to pitch him up and in for ball one. Juan one for two with those two RBIs. It was a long home run, deepest Boy. part of the park. Yeah, Boy. it was. It was a long one. Ooh, maybe could have worn that one. 
well inside. There's a little contorting to keep that one from hitting him. 2 0 pitch coming. Outside, 3 0 now. And this is not the pitcher that gave up the home run, but you, you know, it's still in the back of your mind. They will get the strike call. Good pitch. Low outside corner. 3 1. And that is fouled back. Something metal over there. Not Probably sure. To check that one. Yeah, that ball <coughs> needs to be inspected. And now full count to Quan. And this one hit to the second baseman. He gets his whole self in front of it this time and throws out Quan at first. Quan takes a sharp left before he gets to the bag. Yeah, Don't does. see that very often. <laughs> like to see him run those out, right? <laughs> he, he did that one time in the first game. <laughs> yeah. That's, you don't, don't see that much at any level. So that will bring up Hiron Han. Over two today. Or on this game. I'm forget there was a, another game earlier. Ball one. Is he, a ball. Yeah. Scoreboard thought so. It showed bunt, pulled it back. On the lefty. That ball's inside for ball two. And that pitch. Going into today's games, um, Kelly, uh, the Broncos were tied with Odessa College for second place, and Midland College and NMJC were tied for first. So, depending on what happens after and, today. And were those other two teams playing each other today? No. Oh, they weren't. No. Okay. So, we get the second 4 3 put out in a row. And Han does run it out. Now we will have Kim to the plate, MJ Kim. He has two walks today. Might be eager to swing it. That pitch is down for ball one. Pitcher Collins up to 45 pitches in relief here. It's that one to the shortstop. Nice, nice play. Backhand, and he'll try the two hopper, which doesn't work. And that will be E6 on the throw, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's any way to else, other way to score that one. Although the first baseman had a chance. If he can glove that two hopper, yeah. might have might got him. But yeah, he did. That will go down as an E6. And. Bring Alvidrez to the plate. I'm not sure if he meant to hop at that man. It, it, it was in a rush, but <laughs> yeah. uh, obviously. Yeah, you almost never try to two hop in. Right. I mean, one hopping is a, is a thing for sure on turf, but two hop almost never, I would think. Yeah, he's and, and, and the runner at first had, has pretty good speed. Yeah, so. and, and he was hustling down the line to be sure. Foul ball to Huerta, or sorry, is it Huerta? No, oh, Alvidrez, sorry. And it was Huerta who was hustling down. It's difficult for me to watch Game Changer and not be doing Game Changer. That's, that's, <laughs> I don't, I don't get to participate in baseball without doing Game Changer very much. And there's a pitch up for a ball. So one and two count now. Vidrez with a hit in the game. One of the four Bronco hits. One, two. 
of pi evens at two and two. Olivier had that nice play in the field last half. Foul that one back off the catcher's equipment, I hope, for a foul ball. And we'll have another 2-2 pitch here. Fouled off of, that was a really good pitch. That's a tough pitch right there, inside, inside corner. I don't know if it was a breaking ball, but well, and a good job getting the, getting some bat on there, Absolutely. Too. So another 2-2 two -two coming. Hit that one right at us. That was a self-defense swing, it looked like. <laughs> hey, two strikes, you got to do it sometimes. Right. It's been a good at bat for Alvidrez. Broncos with more runs and hits thus far, and they strike him out there. So we'll have top of the order coming up next time for the Broncos, but they get none across here. So zeros straight across or straight up and down in the sixth. Six three is your score with the Broncos on top. And we'll be back for the seventh right after this on KSVPTV.com. We are back for the seventh inning of Schedule 9. And the Broncos sitting on a 6-3 lead. Kelly McDonald here with Lee Johnson. And it's number two, Caleb Castillo, to lead things off for the Westerners. Good fastball. Ball in the air and should be an easy play, and it is for the second baseman. Lope, sorry, Kim, wrong second baseman. Yeah, it's been a good, it's been an entertaining game here, as I think the first game was too. Some good baseball. Maldonado's done a decent job. He do, he I has. I mean, he has since he, coming in. He has given up some runs, but uh, you know he's uh, he's done all right. All three of those runs earned. Walked three, struck out one, but he's done all right playing with the lead. Maybe he, after, if he can get out of this inning unscathed, I think he probably, well, who knows, I'm, I'm just guessing, <laughs> but maybe start the next inning too. Yeah, he might. See how far he can He's get. up to uh, 45 or so pitches. Got the pitcher Collins here to 
Oh, that's not Collins. That's uh, Morrison. Sorry. That nine kind of looked like a three to me, but I thought that's way bigger than that pitcher was. And he will draw the leadoff walk, which is a theme today. And bring up Huerta, three-hole hitter. Next up, number 21, Sebastian Huerta. Pitch a little bit. There we go. Yeah, beautiful fastball right down Broadway. And you know, you were talking about Morrison over there at first base. You see a guy that big and think you don't have to worry about him stealing. He showed the wheels in the last. Yeah, he's got. I think he's better than average speed. Yeah, I for agree sure. With you. I agree with you. For a tight end, tight body. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> All right, 2-1 count now to Huerta. Certainly a dangerous hitter. Throw over to keep the big guy honest over there. Hitting the there run. he goes. Yep. Good throw. He and called him out. He did call him out. We'll, we'll check a replay, perhaps, because he did not think he was out. Oh, boy, it sure could have been. Bang, bang, huh? Yeah, that was a real close play and a great, great throw by Bernal. As Morrison is caught stealing for out number one, so that erases the leadoff walk. And now a 3-1 pitch coming to Huerta. And that's hit up in the air, but out of play on the right side. Does not make it to the track. So we'll be able to chase that one down a little more easily. And we'll bring up a full count. So a good chance for Maldonado to get the first two hitters here. I'm not sure if that was a straight steal or somebody missed a hit and run. Yeah, I mean, I think it just, they might have just sent the big guy to steal. And there's the walk, which makes that caught stealing hurt just a little bit more. And bring up the cleanup hitter, Harrison Helton. Harrison Helton. Harrison Helton from Woodlands, Texas, College Park High School. Hits this one. Sharp single in the yeah. sixth hole. Nice piece of hitting, and they would have had him loaded, but they're going to have to settle for first and second with two gone. Great throw by the catcher. Looms even bigger now. Absolutely. That shows how important that position is. So Quinn Johnson, the DH to the plate. Looks at the first pitch, ball one. Johnson, a big kid as well. He is. Called strike inside part of the plate. What do they list him as? Six foot, 195. Oh, he looks bigger than that, doesn't he? Inside ball two. I guess that means he's from Sydney, Australia. That is. Or, uh, is that right? That's correct. Yes, that's okay. a uh, moose, like a territory or a state. In, right. In uh, in Australia, Moorbank High School. Is that what that says? Yep. That's, it's a little international recruiting for. Western Texas College as well. And now a 3-1 pitch to the DH. He represents the tying run. Uh-oh. And the tying run is now on first base. Well, with the base hit, they can really make it more interesting. They absolutely can. It's going to bring up Coleman Biggs. 
he is the right fielder. And Biggs 0 for 2 in the game. He's drawn a walk. And pitching coach will be having a word with Maldonado. And have we seen any more action in the bullpen? Yes, we do. Okay. I, so. think, er I think there's a guy on every mound down there, maybe. <laughs> I can see the visitor bullpen a little easier than I can see the right. home bullpen. But, uh, yeah, they're, they're ready if it's next man up time. I'm not sure they might bring a guy in right now. Uh, I'm not sure I'd let this let him go, but we'll see. Yeah, it's a tough situation. I mean, it is the nine hole. Um, uh, sorry, it's not the nine hole. It's just the six hole. So, guy who's not hitting the game, but reach base in the game, and since two of these runs were walked on, I mean, and I don't know what that signal is. I'll give him our signal. Okay. <laughs> because it's not a pitching change, right? Or is it? No, number four is still out there, so. Maybe indicating that that's a number of mound visits. I think he held up a three. Okay. Call go. strike there. Good nice. visit. Yeah, nice start to the at bat here. And a much needed out for Maldonado. The ball is hit. Fair, Fair ball. boy, past the third baseman. And we'll score two. Just now getting the He's ball. They're going to send around. him. Doesn't throw. And we have a tie ball game with a bases clearing double by the six hole hitter Biggs. And boy, how big was that? Just rocketed yeah, past the bag. He stung that ball, didn't oh. he? Boy, that just couldn't have been placed any better. And the ball. It looked like the left fielder, I mean, it looked like the ball kind of got, a, I don't think he was hung up in the fence, but. He had a hard time with he it. He did. Yeah, in the gravel over there. And, you know, it got to that fence kind of quickly. You know, right. once it got past the bag, it was tailing hard to get to the fence where it did. And and then just not even a throw home on that third run. So. They made an appeal play. I don't know on which runner. I mean, uh, three, three of them, right. two of them touched third. Yeah, pick, pick uh, one. Yeah. They're going to say they all did. But they call him safe. So Tate, the center fielder, to the plate, looks at ball one. Tate 0 for 3 in the game with a strikeout. And Maldonado desperately needs another strikeout right here or some other easy out. There's a swing and a miss. Even to 1 1. It's a brand new ball game here in the top of the seventh. In a 6 6 game. Outside ball two. That was a good backhand stab by uh, Adonis Bernal. He actually don't want that guy on third, even with two outs. They're not holding him. That's fouled out of play for strike two. Two's across the top. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Three runs across. And Maldonado struggling a bit here now. 64 pitches in relief. Six runs on just four hits. Six walks is what's killed him. So with that ball, we have full count. Two outs. Runner will be going as soon as the pitcher commits. Oh, no, he won't. And that's why. Ball four. And now go ahead and run at second. Runner at first as well. And are they going to leave him? No. Nope. Now they're going to get him. So we'll take a break as we're going to have a new pitcher, and we'll tell you who that is on the other side. 
Brand new ball game, 6-6. We're in the top of the seventh, two gone. KSVPTV.com. All right, we are back, and the new pitcher for New Mexico Military Institute will be Dong Woon Yuk. Sophomore right-hander, 5'11", 183. And he is from Hwasong, South Korea, in Yatap High School. And Yuk, first pitch is going to be a called strike, so a good start. For his day. He's got some work to do to keep it a tie game. He does. He's needs to uh, help his team out here with some kind of out. Good curveball yeah. or slider. And it's going to be tough with Klaus at the plate. Maldonado, the previous pitcher, still responsible for the two runners that, that, is are, correct. that are on. Klaus already with a hit in the game. Batting in the eight hole. Left fielder is going to offer it this one. Chopper to third foul. And that is the correct call. Didn't third quite baseman. stay fair. <laughs> <coughs> Tried to save it. But it will be strike two. All right, here we go, the 0-2 pitch from Yuk. There go the runners. Double steal. Well, I say the tag was late, I tend to agree with the call. It's a gutsy call. 
Boy, it is. He's been aggressive. Yeah, he has. Um, that, uh, that coach at third base has been very aggressive, and it's got him back in the game and got him in pretty good position here to maybe take the lead. One, two, the count. On Klaus. Yuke delivers, ball down low, evens it at two and two. It was the ball in the dirt, and he did a good job of smothering that one. He did. Not the ideal blocking stance, but he smothered it. <laughs> <clears throat> Whatever works in this situation. Here's the two two, and it's chopper to third again, plays at one. Nice play, play is made, and they avoid any further damage and hold on. So the Broncos will come up trying to take the lead back as we head to the bottom of the seventh in a 6-6 game. KSVPTV.com and Bronco Baseball will be right back. Headed to the bottom of the seventh here, the Mexico Military Institute in a 6-6 ball game. Broncos coming to the plate, trying to take back the lead against Daniel Collins, who's been pretty, pretty solid in relief here. As the Broncos have not scored since the fourth inning. And the first hitter is going to be, let's see, is it top of the order? Are yes. we up to Puig? Okay. Sakaris Puig will lead things off. One for three and a run scored today. And he's ahead 2-0. Broncos need a base runner. Seems like Puig's been up every. <laughs> yeah, he's been. <laughs> yeah, and he hits this one, one hopper the shortstop. He tries the old double. Uh, he beat that out. Tries the old double throw, double bounce. But yeah, he did just beat that out, just showing the speed and. Great hustle. And not a bad effort by the shortstop. Actually, had to get rid of it as quickly as possible, and if he was going to have any chance. And, but uh, Puig, Sakaris Puig just. Lightning fast gets the infield single for his second hit of the game. And that will bring up Son. Yonho Son, one for three today. He's hit this one to center, and Sakaris will go halfway, but he'll have to trot back. And that will be a one pitch fly out, F8. Right at him. And Lizarraga to the plate, the third baseman, 0 for 2. A walk and a strikeout. Go ahead, run it first with one gone. 
Here in the bottom of the seventh, we're scheduled for nine. We'll play till there's a winner. Bizarraga looks at the first pitch away, ball one. Bizarraga hitting 350 on the season. I think he called out a strike. Oh, did he? Apologies. That looked way outside to me. I didn't <laughs> even look up me. to see what the call was. I thought it was, too, but I thought I saw him give the. He did, and that one's <laughs> hit out of play for strike two. So now, on my mistake. Liz Raga in an 0-2 hole. Boy, I don't know how you look at that one, but he did. Strike three. Hard curveball. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't, uh, wasn't the off-speed curveball by any stretch. That was just... That was real good velocity on that ball and yet moving. It looked like a good pitch to hit, but he, like you said, he didn't offer at it. He did not. Shojun O, oh. the freshman, they list him as a catcher here, but he is the first baseman. And that is a ball outside, and also called a ball outside. And we're about to lose our game changer. Jeff, uh, you don't have a plug? Swing and a miss there. Good tailing e fastball. Evens it. Yeah, it sure was. He he thought it was going somewhere else and offered at it. Ball two, two and one count. We have room over here for that. There's oh here eight yeah. plugs right there. <laughs> Two one call the strike on the outside corner. Backdoor curveball. Yeah, he's got good movement on that curve, and yeah, it's he does. it's not slow, so it's potentially fooling hitters into thinking it might be fastball, and then it it goes away. Here's a shot. Oh, nice play right by the to first, the first baseman. baseman and would have made a double play, but uh, didn't need a double play. And that will do it for the Broncos as they are unable to retake the lead. 6 6 game. We're headed to the eighth. KSVPTV.com.
All right, we are back for the top of the eighth inning here from the Mexico Military Institute. 6-6 six, six ball game. Broncos get the win earlier, 5-3. to three. Is that the score of the yes. first game? Okay. And looking to – I'll tell you what, they take a two-run victory here in game two as this one has been tight here. And it will be Uke back on the mound. And first pitch – Hitting and right fielder should be under it. He is for out number one. As the right fielder, Alvidrez, a nice play. And Uke with a one pitch out. Got to love that. And I didn't even know who the batter was in that first one. They got out so quickly. It looks like it was Castillo, and that will bring up Lopez, top of the order. And that was, that's Nathaniel Lopez. Hitless in this game in three at-bats. Has scored a run after walk, drawing a walk. And he's ahead 1-0 and here against Uke. Uke up high with that one, 2-0 and count. The leadoff hitter, Lopez. The second baseman who plays the field with a lot of confidence. We'll say that. Yes, he does. Call strike there from Muke. He's definitely trying to get on for the neck, the guy that's on deck. Well, absolutely. It, and the Broncos have had such trouble with the leadoff hitter. In this second game, there's a nice pitch for a called strike from Muke. Two and two the count. He's got a sneaky breaking ball. That was a pretty one there for sure. Rocks and fires. This one hit high in the air to left, shallow left. Left fielder coming hard and makes the play. Shortstop going the opposite direction. Could have slapped him five on his way <laughs> by there. <laughs> Good communication out there, we'll say. And that will bring up the big kid, Morrison. Lefty first baseman. Morrison still hitless today in both games. He has walked three times in this game. And draws the ball here. You know, as a hitter, he really wants to oh, untie man. the game. Absolutely. After, well, not hitting at all and then walking, you got to think he's just dying for something he can swing at. He does swing and miss there. That's a good changeup, really good changeup by Uke. That evens it at one ball and one strike. Misses low for ball two. Wind is picked up again. Blowing across. Inside ball three. Or ball two. No, it's ball three. Yep. Three and one. Yep. There it is. Chopped it off his foot and that or his leg and that hurts. That hurts. That's why those guys wear the protection these days. He's probably going to go get some after this game. Yeah, that's. That was. Uh, that does not feel good. Looks like right off the shin. Mm. So he'll gather himself a bit here. Umpire will be a nice guy and clean off the plate. like Morrison is okay enough to go ahead and look at a full count pitch right here. Two gone. Two quick outs for the Broncos here top of the eighth. 
And chopper foul back to the screen. He fouled off a bunch of pitches like that last time when he walked. Yeah, he's he's dying to get something between the wide lines. Another payoff pitch delivered by Uke. And that was hit right at Jeff Gunn. He didn't flinch. <laughs> I don't think he saw it. <laughs> it. It's easy to flinch when you not flinch when you don't see it, right? <laughs> All right, another 3 2 coming from Uke. Uke up to 19 pitches now. And sharply hit to the first baseman, knocks it down. He'll have to go back to the pitcher, and he did beat it out. It appeared to beat it out. We'll get a replay. Oh, thought he got him. And let's see the replay. Ooh, wow. I think that's a tie goes to the runner situation. Yeah. And, uh, and if that, that is the can, case. That kid can really run. Yeah. I mean. I, I mean, yeah, he is – no part of slow, and he is a big, big yeah, kid. Yeah, for 200, it says 210 pounder. I mean, he may weigh uh, a little more than that. I think he has to. 6'3, <coughs> listed at 6'3, 210, and he's a big kid, and I'll tell you what. He's, and after getting hit on the shin. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's that's good hustle. That's, that's just well done by Morrison. So, Huerta to the plate. Go ahead, run is at first two gone on the. Uh, Close play at first. I do think they got it right. He hits this uh -oh. one a ton to deep center uh -oh. and off the wall. And that is going to score the run easily. And it will not be a triple stand-up double off the wall in center field. I'm going to say that ball was hit 385. Definitely. He stung that one. And probably on a less windy day. That's gone. But I'll tell you what, the wind is really causing the ball to catch, especially high up in the air. All right. But the Westerners have taken the lead on that stand-up double from Huerta as Morrison scores easily from first base. The ball was in the air for a long time. So Helton to the plate now. First pitch called strike. Helton one for four on the day with two strikeouts. Third baseman bats from the right side. Hits this one to the center fielder and that will not drop. That will be out number three, but the Westerners take the lead seven to six as we head to the bottom of the eighth. Broncos down one, ksvptv.com. All right, we are back. 
for the bottom of the eighth inning here. Broncos give up the lead. They trail seven to six. And will be Collins back out there for Western Texas College. Collins in relief, five innings pitch, just two hits, two runs. Neither of them earned. One walk to go with three strikeouts. So he's been very good in relief. 66 pitches, 41 of those for strikes. So they stick with him. And the Broncos, not sure who's up for the Broncos here. It's going to be Bernal, the catcher. It is. All right, so Bernal lead things off. He gets after the first pitch, hits it to the gap, but right fielder seems to be there. And Wynn didn't do much with that one despite the flags pretty much being straight across. And a one pitch out for Collins. Still doing a good job Boy, to continue. Yeah. Bernal, who is the leading hitter for the Broncos, 0 for 3 now in the game. And that will bring up Quan. He with the two-run home run earlier in the in the game. Could tie the game with another one. He's just looking to get on at this point. As he chops that one foul towards third. Broncos need to get a base runner or two for sure. Well, if they want to earn the uh, split here, they absolutely need to do that. What a good slider. Yeah, called strike there on Quan. Quan hitting 356 coming into the game. Check swing, didn't get to check it, and they're going to tag him out anyway. And that is a strikeout for Collins. Collins picking up a lot of momentum. <laughs> he is. He's gotten better the longer he's been in there, for Ab sure. Absolutely, he has settled in nicely. And that will bring in he run Han, the lefty. First pitch to him is a ball. Han, the freshman, hitting 365. 17 RBIs on the season, or coming into the game, I should say. Are well, they going to say he swung, or no, they're going to say it was a strike either way. So one and one count. On with a decent on base percentage of 448. Broncos need him on here with two gone. Are there two outs? There are, yeah. Two outs. Oh, yeah, the one pitch out and then the strikeout. So. 2 1 pitch. To Han. We'll even the count. Called strike two. Another good breaking ball. And now the Broncos running short on outs here. 2 2 pitch coming. This ball is hit foul out of play near the visitor dugout. I think he hit that one right off his thumbs. <laughs> and I think Collins kind of jammed him up there. Another 2-2. Two -two. This one is going to be at the left fielder, and he makes the play, so a quick, quick inning for Collins. And Broncos will be down to their last three outs with Western Texas coming up in the top of the ninth when we come back on KSVPTV.com.
We are in the ninth inning here in New Mexico Military Institute. Kelly McDonald, Lee Johnson here with you for Bronco Baseball. And Broncos trail 7-6, to six, and they need three outs here to give themselves a chance in the bottom of the ninth. They're going to have to do it against the 6-7-8 the hitters. And there is a first pitch hit. And that was Quinn... Johnson, I believe. Yeah, the DH. Okay, so Johnson <laughs> jumps on the first pitch and hits a single into shallow left. They're definitely seeing the ball better. They are. Are the Westerners. I mean, uh, absolutely. I mean, Uke has been pretty good in relief, but I think this time through they're definitely seeing the ball. I think we might have a pinch runner. Got a number for him over there. Let's see. Oh, okay. It's going to be Macias. Oh, a pinch hitter. Pinch. Wait, no. Pinch runner, I meant. Sorry. Okay. I said hitter. I meant runner. So is the is the hitter still? Six. Coleman Brick Biggs. Biggs. Yes. Okay. So Johnson Sorry. singles and Biggs. I can't. I don't know. Is Macias, I believe. That's what Game Changer has. They're going to say called strike here on Biggs. Curve ball for a ball. All right. Oh, well, you know, it would help if I looked on the right team. Jason Macias, number one, is the pinch runner, we believe. 1-1 one, one count here to Biggs. Biggs in the game, one for three. Yeah, it is. But uh, three RBI on that one hit. Was a bases clearing double that tied the game. Big Show's bunt here, pulls it back, and ball two. Yes. Well. Oh, they're going to say strike. Let's see if the umpire puts up the same fingers as the scoreboard says. He's not going to put up any. And now the pitcher wants time to tie his shoe. You got a one-on-one -on -one count. That's up. Oh, now they're saying one-on-one -on -one count? Yeah. Game changer has two strikes. And now Coach Cook asking field umpire about something. So we're unsure of the count. We're unsure of. <laughs> could almost hear what the umpire was yeah. through that mic. Not that, you know, those mics are so good. They are. You know, when there's not a lot of other crowd noise, you can hear sometimes more than we probably want broadcast out <laughs> All right, Biggs digs in here. We have eight counts, and Biggs is going to hit this one to the left. It's going to drop for a single at least. He's going to dig for two, and he's going to get it. Well, they are in business. They are again. definitely in business again with nobody gone here in the ninth. And runners at second and third. Yeah, we said beforehand that these these hitters, it was the five, six, seven hitters, no easy outs. And that is going to bring Tate to the plate now. He is hitless in this game. He has drawn a walk, has one strikeout. Yeah, he's got one job to do here, or trying to do. Get the ball out of the infield. Absolutely, preferably to the right side. He's I thought they might s safety squeeze, but good play. Yeah, if he held on the ball, he's going to be out. That's good play by Dong Woon Yuk, yeah, the Yuk. pitcher. Yuk Absolutely. goes after the ball, and catcher says, bring it to me. He does, makes the tag, and they get the lead runner. And get the first out of the inning, an important one, as another run does not come across. Now you have runners at the corners. 
You see is called out at the plate. Biggs advances to third on the... Uh, Hey, that's a safety squeeze, right? Technically, or I, I think the runner he was coming from third. So, so that's that's the old suicide squeeze. It is. Right? And we're gonna have a new pitcher. So that'll be all for Uke. So we'll get you the numbers on Uke. One and two-thirds innings pitch. Gave up four hits, one run. It was an earned run. No walks, no strikeouts. And we will have a new pitcher in the game. And it is going to be part of the Korean contingency, I believe. But I don't see a number. I think it's seven. Okay, if it's seven. No, oh, maybe not. Not. Is that seven, Jeff? That would be Han. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, was the DH coming in to pitch. All right, so Han will likely still be doing both. So it will be. So we'll give Han a few pitches to warm up here, and we'll take a quick break be back for more our ninth inning action here from New Mexico Military on KSVPTV.com. All right, welcome back. We're solving the world's problems here. And uh, armchair managing. But it will be Han, the new pitcher. And he's coming in the game with a 6.48 ERA. Six appearances, eight and a third innings. And his first pitch is a ball. He coming from the side. It's a yeah. almost submarine. Yeah, I, I, I think someone said sidewinder. Got him picked winder. off. Got and him picked they off. got him. And uh, I tell you what, Han picks Tate off first base, and that was a really good move. Well, that was a gift. From he run Han well, and we were discussing the uh, the aggressiveness of the of the Western. Texas Westerners here. And you were talking about the sidearm delivery. That's not it's not a submariner, but boy, it's it's right on the borderline. He that has, is a true sidearm yeah, pitcher. He has right good there. velocity. Oh wow. Just we're, missed. Ooh. That, that was close, wasn't that, it? That was real close. We're gonna say outside. Two one count now to Klaus. Sweeping. Did he go? It doesn't matter because it was a strike. Good sweeper. I'm going to call that curveball a sweeper. Well, yeah. Because <laughs> the only way it's got to go is sideways. So that's ooh, inside. Didn't sweep enough that time. Full count now to Klaus. If he can get out of, if he can get out of this, it'll be. Yeah, it's big. This out is big. He's gonna walk him and bring runners to the corners. Would have loaded the bases. And that will bring up number two, Caleb Castillo. 
Castillo hitless in this one, has scored a run and walked. Or walked and scored a run, I guess I should say. Say in the right order. With with the Westerners' aggressiveness, I, I, I don't think the runner's going to be at first. No, he's not going to be there very long, is he? That's, I don't think. Uh, that's a foul ball. Let's see. For strike one. Well, he didn't give any signals, so I may be wrong. <laughs> well, he may have uh, learned his lesson. You know, the aggressiveness has cost him a run and an out right. just in this inning. And, you know, he, he was aggressive in the previous innings as well. A one called strike two. It's not Castillo on an 0 2 hole. Two gone, runners at the corners. Outside ball one. Coach didn't give any signals, so I guess it's just up to the, leaving it up to the hitter. Well, and Han doesn't really appear to be too concerned with him over there. Right. He does look, but. Curveball in there, strike three, ends nice the inning. Nice pitch. And that was a pretty pitch that came back across the plate. So there it is. Bottom of the ninth coming up. Seven to six Westerners. We'll be right back and see if the Broncos can get the two runs they need to win or the run they need to continue play here. KSVPTV.com. We'll be right back. All right, we are back, and we've got a new pitcher as the potential closer comes in for the Western Texas College Westerners, and that is going to be Brock Zimmer, right-hander. Colleyville Heritage High School, Colleyville, right. Texas. Where is Colleyville, Texas? I'm going to say up by the Metroplex. Okay. That's a, always a good guess, right? Close to something bigger, is that what you're saying? That's it. <laughs> All right, MJ Kim will be the potential tying run at the plate here as we start the bottom of the ninth inning. And the new pitcher, the, the righty, with the baseball name, Brock Zimmer. Ooh, he throws hard. The big righty. And Zimmer listed at 6'3", 195. Big right-handed hitter. Oh, inside. Hard, ball, hard slider. Ball two. Yep. And that was one of those pitches that says, don't get too close to the plate there, hitter. MJ Kim digs in, 2-0 pitch coming. Zimmer delivers outside ball three, so in danger of putting the tying run on base here to lead things off here in the ninth. 
I'd assume he's taken. <laughs> well, never assume, but uh, he, he better be. But he better be. That's <laughs> good. Coach, coach, yeah. Cook coach Cook can come unglued <laughs> if he swings and misses here. 3 0 pitch coming. Zimmer delivers oh. outside part of the plate. Okay. <laughs> All right. That plate expands 3 0. I that don't care a, what you tell me. That was a liberal call. That was generous, we'll say. 3 1 pitch now. MJ leaves that one up for ball four. It's a time run will. Jog over to first, and will it be the nine hole hitter of Idrez? It will not. So the pitch hitter is going to be, it's going to be Julian Payan, or probably Julian Payan, the redshirt freshman infielder from Sanity. So. We'll see how he does. The lefty going to come in against the big throw on righty. And oh, yeah, I don't think it's one no, of those. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. So we'll see what they do with Kim at first. Call strike outside half. Kid's thrown hard. Yeah, he does have velocity. A one pitch coming. And that's potential double play ball. Flip to the shortstop and thrown over for the four, six, three double play. And the Broncos down to their last out here with nobody on. Top of the lineup coming on, or coming up, I should say, and that will be Sakarias. Sakarias Puig will represent the Last hope for the Broncos here. Yeah, Weeks had a good game, a two-hit game. He definitely needs to extend the inning somehow. All right. Doesn't have to be a hit. He could draw a walk. It's been a walk in the inning. That ball's in the dirt, the artificial dirt in front of the plate. Ball one. Puig definitely a disciplined hitter. Good leadoff, so he will take pitches if he has to. But he gets after that one, it's hit in the air, and that should be the ball game. And F8 will end it. And that will be it for the Broncos here. As they drop game four and drop three of four to Western Texas College, seven to six. Give you some Bronco stats here. The Broncos get six runs on five hits, no errors. Puig with two hits in the game, he went two for five. Saw one for four. Um, we'll just go over the hits and RBIs. It was O with an RBI as well as Bernal, Bernal without a hit. Quan with the two run home run was the highlight offensively for the Broncos for sure. Alvidrez did add a hit to that as well, but again, just five hits in the game, four RBI, five walks, six strikeouts for the Broncos, just two extra base hits, Puig with the double, and Quan with the home run, and. I was looking at the walk category. Oh, okay. Now for for the pitchers. Okay, pitching for 12 walks. Pitching for is the that Broncos. 12 by some balls. Yeah, yeah, it is a total of 12 walks for Bronco pitchers. Zacharias, four innings pitch, one hit, no runs, four walks, three strikeouts, and then Maldonado came in. He had seven walks in just two and two-thirds innings of play to go with four hits, six runs, all of them earned. You just can't give up that many no, walks, can you? Absolutely uh, not. You came in and did fine. He did give up four hits and a run. It was an earned run, and Hahn was good in relief in limited work. Two-thirds of an inning didn't give up a hit 
or a run. Western Texas highlights Huerta with two hits in the game, Johnson with two hits in the game, and Biggs with multiple hits with two in the game. Doubles from Biggs and Huerta, triple by Huerta, and a stolen, uh, stolen bases by Biggs and Tate. Pitching for the Westerners, two innings for Baruby. He gave up four runs, all of them earned. Three walks, three strikeouts. Collins came in six innings of relief, and he was very good. Gave up two runs, but neither of them earned. Only one walk and four strikeouts, and Zimmer uh, gets the save, I believe, with just the one walk as the tying run was on base. So he will earn the save. Yeah, it's right there. So that'll do it. It's been a pleasure, Mr. Johnson. I hope we Enjoyed can do it, it again. Yes, sir. And that leaves uh, the Broncos 13-11 and 11 in conference, and the Westerners would be... Seven and fifteen, is that what I'm seeing? Eight and sixteen. Eight and sixteen, yes, sir. okay. Yep. All right, that's gonna do it for us from New Mexico Military Institute on KSVPTV.com. Have a great evening and a good weekend.